Welcome to a lesson on food chains. Now, a food chain is a simple diagram used by scientists to show which organisms rely on one another for food. Now, a food chain always starts with an organism known as a producer. Now, a producer is any organism which can make its own food using photosynthesis or some other method. Now, in our particular example we're going to use, we're going to look at plants and we're going to have the example of a carrot plant. So a carrot plant is a producer because it takes energy from sunlight to make its own food. Now, there are some organisms which can't do this. We're an example. We cannot make our own food using sunlight. So what we have to do is consume. Now, another creature that does this might be, for a carrot, a rabbit. So we draw an arrow showing the direction of energy transfer from carrot to rabbit. Now, because the rabbit consumes the carrot, it is known as a primary consumer. A primary consumer is any organism which eats a producer. Next, we have some organisms which cannot eat carrots, and they also don't do photosynthesis. Now, these we might call secondary consumers, if they're able to eat the rabbit. Now, in our example here, we're going to have a fox. A fox is an example of a secondary consumer because it eats the primary consumer. Now notice the direction of the arrows. The arrows shows the energy being transferred from one organism to the other. It does not point from the organism that's going to eat it to the organism being eaten. It's the other way around. So we have energy going from the carrot into the rabbit and then from the rabbit into the fox. Now to make sure we understand this, let's replace all of these with equivalent examples in a different ecosystem. Instead of carrot, we might have, let's say, seaweed. Instead of a rabbit, and instead of a fox, we could have a crab that eats the seaweed, and we could also have a squid which eats the crab. Now, in this particular case, the producer is the seaweed. It produces its own food using photosynthesis. The crab is a primary consumer because it eats a producer. And the squid is a secondary consumer because it eats the primary consumer. Now, the last thing we need to understand is what happens to energy as we pass along this chain. Well, since the producer gets its energy from the sun, and that energy is going to be a maximum at this point, is going to have drawn energy from the sun and stored it in the seaweed. Well, let's imagine some numbers. Let's take 2,000 joules of energy. Unfortunately, by the time it gets into the crab, some of that energy is going to be lost and wasted. And so the energy must decrease each time we pass from one organism in a food chain to the next. Now, it turns out that this is roughly around 10% of the energy actually gets passed on. So if the seaweed had 2,000 joules of energy, then that means the crab is only going to have around 200 joules of energy. Next, for the squid to eat the crab, well, again, some of that energy is going to be lost and wasted. Around 10% is what's going to reach the squid. So in this case, we're going to end up with 20 joules of energy at the end. Now, the question is, where does that energy go? Well, when the seaweed is eaten by the crab, not all of the seaweed is digested. And so therefore, some energy is wasted that way. Another place that energy is wasted is the fact that the crab respires. It moves around, it uses the energy in order to move from one place to another. So that energy again is lost to this system. So with each movement from one 
organism on the food chain to the next, we always lose energy. It cannot increase, it can only get smaller and smaller as we go higher in this food chain.